Captain's Log, Stardate 87498.8. This will be my final entry aboard this vessel. My time as Captain of USS Barham, which was always meant to be a temporary assignment, has come to an end, as the officer who was originally meant to take command has completed her own prior assignment and is now available. But my actual command, USS Temere, is still a month or so away from completing a refit, so we are once again being transferred to yet another temporary assignment. Right, that all seems to be in order. Command codes transferred to new captain. Right then. Goodbye, Barham. Hello, Odyssey. The hell was that? Where's that coming from? It's my pad. We have reports of a true way fleet entering the neutral zone and picking a fight with the Klingons near the Donatu system. Having two of our enemies fight is good for the Federation, but I want to know why the true way is so far out of their territory. Intercept them and deal with them. If you need to engage the Klingons as well, do so. A Starfleet task force has already been sent to the area. You'll need to join them in the Donatu system as soon as possible. Right, we arrived in the Donatu system. We found the Klingons and the true way in the distance there. Whoever contacted me just called them Klingons, said they were enemies, but these aren't just Klingons. They're one specific house, a house that has been against the alliance with the Federation and the Romulan Republic. So, at the very least, if we do have to fire on them, we won't be starting a war. Flores says that she's picking up multiple hostile contacts, both rogue Klingons and the true way. She says she can understand the rogue Klingons' presence here. They've been trying to claim the system for months, but the true way normally don't leave Cardassian space. They have no reason to be here. She says they're refusing to respond to our hails, and she says we may have to board one of their ships to get some answers. Understood, Commander. Red alert! Shields up! Battle stations! Right, Tabral, hail the click, belay that order! Target the click on better prey to port, fire all weapons! Any hell, four shields are down, but these fingers are nothing we can't handle, not in an Odyssey class. Certainly not. Target the next bird of prey, fire all weapons! Fire! The Hala Fort Shields are still regenerating. That better prey, for their Fort Shields are down, their structural integrity is falling. Our torpedoes fire. Good work, Coles. Target the next vessel, fire all weapons. Right, target that better prey and fire. Looks like the Starfleet Task Force has already arrived and is engaging the Klingons. The Nebula class over there. Right. Right, that's another vessel down. Fire! Target that Vulture class, fire all weapons. Get them in a tractor beam for torpedoes. Launch. Right, that's the Klingons dealt with. Coles, target. Looks like our allies have managed to disable the Cardassians. All ships, this is Captain Blue Ninja of the USS Odyssey. Hold fire. I plan to board that ship, find out what the hell they're doing here. Flores reports that the Cardassian flagship has been disabled. Their warp core is stable for now, and she recommends we get a closer look. Agreed, Commander, you have the bridge. Beam in security teams after the ship will beam forward. Terrell, Coles, Nessies, Jerez, you're with me. 
Caller's reports that Cardassian security teams are already starting to move to our position. He says we should expect every resistance. Thank you, Lieutenant. Weapons ready. Right, I, I think I found the security teams, Lieutenant. Let's prepare to engage them. Fire! Grenade! The hell dodged that one. I was about to throw another one and we retaliated. Right, anyone else? Yes. Holy hell, they ambushed us. Right, good work. Fire! Holy hell, it's been a while since I've had to engage in combat with Cardassians. It's a lot easier than our last mission. Considering that even in our century, these people's technology is beneath ours. Uh, but nonetheless, Jerez went down. Right, fire! Right, the room's clear, let's get to the bridge. Nessie's reports that the Cardassians are raising force fields to keep us from moving through their ship. She says if you can reroute power away from those systems, then they'll be unable to block our passage. Thank you, Lieutenant. Let's get on it. Coles says that should take care of all the security measures between us and the bridge. But he says I shouldn't expect the Cardassians to give up that easily. They'll probably send more security teams to intercept us. Understood, Lieutenant. We'll be ready for them. Ride with me. Let's get to the bridge. Looks clear so far. More security teams on both sides of the corridor. Open fire! Let's get cover! Right, left side down. Good work. Oh, I've got another room here. Looks like the... What the hell? Oh, well, well they shot at them for a bit, but they've seen us. What the hell were those? Bloody hell, that's the captain! What the hell? What the hell were those things? They were dangerous enough that the captain came to the mess hall to help fight them. What the hell? Collins is wondering if I saw that as well. I was just about to ask you that, Lieutenant. What the hell? And yes, I... yes, I did. The hell? Right, let me just scan for any more Cardassians. Right, everything seems to be clear. All of the ones that are on the bridge are either dead or came to the mess hall to fight those... whatever they were. Right, let's uh, search the body, see if we can find anything. What the hell? Tavrel says that the Cardassian doesn't have any wounds on him, but her readings show that he was dead before we entered the room. She says she recommends we find a medkit and perform an examination on the corpse. She says we need to know more about what happened to him. She says if he was attacked by those creatures, we need to be cautious. Any contact may be lethal. Thank you, Tavral. Let's find a medkit. Should have brought Dr. Dalberg on this mission. He's the only qualified surgeon around here, but considering we're not actually trying to save his life, and we don't need to be too bothered about that, I'm sure we have the. I'm sure Tavral has the necessary expertise. The hell? Connor says there it was again. He said he wonders if there's something wrong with the environmental controls on the ship. Perhaps, Lieutenant. But considering it only appeared when we saw those creatures, I'm I believe they're probably connected. Right, this looks like their brig. If there are any prisoners if there are any prisoners in here, we either have to free them or take them into custody ourselves. Let's search let's search it. We can look for a medkit later. It's not like the body's going anywhere. Hold on, my translator says these are patient records. Have they been using this as a sick bay? The hell, anyway. <clears throat> patient admitted with a fractured tibia suffered while in the holodeck. The bone was splintered and treated with a regenerator. Patient returned, later complaining of pain in the treated leg, as well as an elevated body temperature. Patient was then treated with a T-cell stimulator to save off 
Any possible infection, patient's condition continued to worsen while they were being continuously treated to boost their immune response. Patient died 6.2 hours after injury. Due to the extreme rate of deterioration in the patient, an infection is unlikely. Fear of a contagious agent being responsible has resulted in quarantine protocols being enacted. A cause of death has yet to be determined. Corpse will be placed in stasis field, pending further examination by the chief medical officer. So they must have been using the brig to quarantine him. Fascinating. Further examination to the patient's death is pending an autopsy by the chief medical officer. Ah, oh, medkit. Tavral says that the Cardassian looks to have died from the same cause as the Cardassian we examined in the mess hall. She says we need to find a medkit to know more about the, what happened to him. We, Tavral, uh, I'd like to direct your attention to, um... Uh, look, just look down a bit. <laughs> just a little bit. An autopsy was conducted using a Neuralite probe to obtain a sample of brain tissue. Examination of the neural tissue did not show any signs of infection or trauma that would result in headaches or fatality. Cause of death remains undetermined, pending further investigation. Quarantine protocols put in place on a chief medical officer's orders, and a level 8 force field is in use to prevent the spread of unknown, possibly infectious agents. Cause of death remains undetermined, pending further investigation. Fascinating. Right, let's conduct this impromptu autopsy. Right, let's start with the Neuralite probe. Terrell says that a Neuralite probe has determined that this individual died from a radical decrease in neural energy. She says it's almost as if he was drained by an outside source. All of the brain activity came to a complete stop as its energy was depleted. She says there's a great deal of interference being picked up by the tricorder. She says it's most likely the result of an energy residue from whatever was used to do this to the Cardassian. She says perhaps we can track it down following, by following the energy trail. She says there's a science lab across the hall from the med bay. It should have accessed the ship's internal sensors. Understood. Right, I'm scanning. Scan is picking up high levels of electroplasma throughout the ship. Well, that's not surprising, considering nuclear fission, a common energy source for non-spacefaring species. It provides a large amount of power with relatively little special knowledge. It is unsuitable power source for interstellar travel, while races such as humans have used... Right, let's scan for trialic waves. Trialic waves are the result of a process called selective molecular polarization in which a substance is modified by a fundamental level to convert matter to energy. Trilic energy is not used by any known species because they are known to cause deterioration of living tissue. That, could ex that, that might explain what's been happening to the Cardassians. Scanning. Terrell says that she is indeed picking up trialic waves, a large concentration centered around the ship's bridge. She says trilic waves are harmful to humanoids. She says we'll not be able to be in there for very long, and the Cardassians would be subject to the deleterious effect as well. She suggests we take a closer look. Whatever is causing the trilic waves is probably responsible for the deaths of the Cardassians in the mess hall. Indeed, Commander. Right, all of you with me. Weapons ready, we have no idea what's in there. Come with me. What the hell? It is that... One of those things again. Kola says it's headed for the bridge. Let's follow it. They, they, I have no doubt that they have something to do with these trilic waves. Let's find out what. Ride weapons re What the hell? What are those things? They're attacking! Fire! So unfortunately, our personal shields seem to be able to protect us from it. The Cardassians wouldn't have been wearing any, which is why they weren't protected. God, more dead Cardassians, they're coming! Fire! They're all being vaporized! Holy hell, there's another- oh, That one's larger than the rest. Why does he have an Ophidian? Fire! Bloody hell! I'm in a stasis field! Christ! 
keep firing! What is this thing? Bloody hell! Why was he holding an Ophidian? Terrell says that from what we've seen, she believes that those were Davidians. She says she recalls it from something she read from the logs of the Enterprise D. She says it's fascinating, however, that the Davidians aren't out of phase with us. She says normally we can't see them without a subspace force field tuned with an extremely sensitive phase discriminator. She says we don't have that, and the Cardassians certainly didn't. So how are they appearing in our reality? She recommends checking the Axon's crew log entries. She says maybe they were doing something that made it easier for the Davidians to exist here. Fascinating. I do recall something like that, and I, I'd forgotten until you mentioned the name Davidian. Right, let's check the let's check the logs. If I recall correctly, when the Enterprise D encountered the Davidians, they were in the process of traveling back in time and capturing humans from Earth in the uh, 19th century. See, it, it's consistent with what's been happening to the Cardassians here, but, but how could we see them and how could they interact with us? Our mission goes well. The Axon has disabled or destroyed seven enemy ships. I look forward to reporting our successes. The chief medical officer is concerned about casualties. It is his job to be concerned. Mine is to operate this ship at peak efficiency. I have read his report about unexplained deaths and dismissed it. There is always an explanation. He simply hasn't looked hard enough for it. Repairs to the Axon go as expected. Running low on deuterium and warp coils. Wish there was more time between battles to do more than patch critical systems. But time is the most precious commodity there is. Four crewmen down. One died in battle with Klingon forces. But three others died in accidents. I have spoken to the captain about launching an investigation, but he sees nothing but his dreams of glory and a return to conquest. Unusual spike in triolic wave energy may be affecting warp core efficiency. Must speak to triolic and see if his sensor readings have turned up anything unusual. Letter from Maja arrived today. She and the children are well, but she worries about me. She wants me to leave the true way and return to Cardassia Prime. Six months ago, I would have ignored her, please. Now, though, I miss her. And I see no end to this fighting. Perhaps she is right. Science officers log Stardate 86790.8. My duties on a combat mission are limited, but I was pleased today to have a chance to scan the approaching Griffin's Comet. The comet itself has not been a focus of much scientific inquiry and at last passed through this sector in the late 23rd century. My scans, however, reveal surprising amounts of triolic wave energy emitting from the comet, as well as detectable amounts of chroniton particles. The triolic waves will unfortunately prevent a closer study of the comet. They are quite harmful to humanoid life forms, and the captain is loath to jeopardize our mission for my curiosity. I have requested the launch of a class one probe, the chronotons are of even greater interest. They appear in instances of temporal disturbances, which could mean that this comet has been, or will be, in the presence of a temporal event. Time mechanics are so cumbersome. I must have more data. But the captain has never had much interest in science. Perhaps I will remind him that chronoton particles are harmful against the aliens who live in the Bajoran wormhole. A potential weapon to use against the Bajoran's gods may be of enough interest to him to divert our course. He mentioned a comet, Driffin's Comet, emitting chronotons and triolic waves. Fascinating. That might be something. Tabral says that we should return to the Odyssey. She says that Starfleet Command would want to know that there are Davidians in the Donatu Sector. She says these battlegrounds are now their feeding grounds. Possibly due to the presence of the Driffin's Comet. Indeed, Commander, we'll have to look into this further. Odyssey, this is Blue Ninja. The away team is finished here. Beam us back to the ship we have a report to give to Starfleet Command.
Are you sure you found no sign of the Cardassians attempting to open a portal, or otherwise bring the Davidians into our phase variants? What? This is troublesome. There are pieces to the puzzle I don't have yet. Let me do some digging and I will be in touch. Well, could you at least tell me who the hell you are and who you're working for before we can- And he closed the channel, of course he did. But why would he ask about the Cardassians opening a portal or bringing the Davidians into phase with us? Why would the Cardassians try to do that? But I did get a look at his face, and his uniform, if it even is a uniform. It certainly wasn't a Starfleet uniform, which I would have assumed. I thought he might have been someone from Starfleet Intelligence, or someone undercover with intelligence, but he would have identified himself then. Who the hell is this guy?